Hello and welcome to the Mommy First Year Survival Guide. Used to get my head done, used to have my nails long, used to wearing makeup every day. Hello everybody, how are we doing? Let me be the first one to tell you an early happy Mother's Day. In the spirit of it, I finally want to share my mommy must-haves, my top 10 survival guide. If you are pregnant, if you are like one year postpartum, this video is for you. If you know someone pregnant, send them this. If you want someone in your life to get you something, <laughs> send them this. While every pregnancy and postpartum is so different, I always say this, I think I've narrowed it down to the top 10 essentials for everybody, dare I say? I love making these types of must-have videos. I did a baby newborn one, I did three, four months, five months. It's finally time that we do one for the moms out there. P.S. I have a sleeping pug who is snoring right next to me and I have a sleeping baby in the other room. We should be good to go to get through this quickly, just you and I, but we will see. Let's just hop in with number one. Number one is a category. It is like the four main things for postpartum. I have a hospital bag video that kind of tells you what you really need postpartum. But if I'm to narrow it down to the things that saved me immediately postpartum, it is the sits bath. This is something I didn't even have before. I was watching like a video after I gave birth and someone was using it and I was in so much pain from my tear, from my stitches and this save me this was my favorite item i made the mistake and i bought the small bag i'm gonna link the exact one i used down below get the big bag because i bought three of the small bag which wasn't very economical and with anything ask your doctor if you can use this but i had tearing i had stitches and it is to heal that it helps heal it it helps with itch it kind of gives you like a three five minute me time to kind of calm down it also helps cleanse everything because i did not realize how much is happening down there postpartum not even coming out but things you have to put on you're putting ice packs tux pad dermoplast i did not buy any special thing for it i just put it in like a couple inches of water in my bathtub, sat in it in like warm water and let it do its thing. And it did magic. It made me feel renewed, clean, fresh, less pain. Honestly, I cannot say enough good things about a sits bath, get it. If you watch my hospital bag video, then you know a lot of the things that you buy tend to be given to you at the hospital. If you don't live in the US, maybe don't listen to this, but I really feel like the only things you need to buy for the house is the sits bath, like I said, you're gonna need pads, dermaplast I used all the time. I actually didn't like the tux pads after the first few days because they would stick, like dry up to me and my stitches and then I would have to rip them off. I've never heard anyone else talk about it, but it is like it sounds, not fun. I just dermoplast, which is kind of like a numbing spray that every time you use the bathroom, you spray it or just every 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I really liked the Frida Mom postpartum underwear. It is a disposable pair. You are kind of leaking a lot. There's a lot happening. I personally didn't want to save the chonies from that experience, so the postpartum underwear, it is a little bit extra. But if I'm to give birth again, those are really the things that I'm going to have. I know there's like diapers and oils and the tux cooling pads and the padsicles. It's all great, but these were what really worked for me and what I would recommend. Number two must have, and I've never heard anyone talk about this, but you need this, a mattress protector. There are so many things that are going to happen to your mattress that it needs protection. Whether you're breastfeeding or not, you're probably gonna leak at some point. I'm breastfeeding for nine months and I still leak through the night. Even with breast pads on, you are probably just gonna start changing your baby on the bed every once in a while because the changing pads all the way in the other room. Or you're just gonna have a blowout and it's gonna hit the mattress. You're also gonna have a rush of hormones through your body that creates menopause-like hot flashes and you're going to sweat through the night and 
it's gonna affect your mattress. I got mine a little late in the game. I wish someone had told me like I'm telling you. I got mine from Amazon. I'll link it down below. Number three, get yourself some snacks. I personally love the Go Macro Bars. If you do breastfeed, you actually burn more calories breastfeeding than you do during pregnancy. I think it's something like 500 calories a day while breastfeeding, and I think 350 for pregnancy. I, I could be wrong, but let me tell you, you're gonna be hungry and your body needs to eat. Your body needs to heal. Do not starve yourself. Do not forget to eat. Be prepared with the snacks. I'll link some of my favorites down below, but the Go Macro Bars are great because they are vegan, dairy-free. I think they're gluten-free, but as we know, my baby is lactose intolerant, allergic to dairy. It is a little bit common to have dairy be a little bit of a flare-up thing for babies if they're having trouble sleeping, digesting, colicky. It doesn't hurt to remove it from your diet if you are breastfeeding. Rant done, but I'll put my faves down below. Number four, diaper stations everywhere. I'm nine months, almost 10 months postpartum, and I still have diaper stations all around the house. I know you wanna get your nursery like super perfect and organized, but if you're stretched on time, do this instead. I got these bins from Target. I have four of them. I have them in every room still, and I'm telling you, it's not like a lazy thing. It is a survival thing, okay? You are running on adrenaline, no sleep. You are barely getting by. Save yourself a little bit of time and energy. I have a little toy because right now she is not making diaper changes easy, so I'm trying to do a distraction. But have wipes, diaper cream, diapers, a toy, in a bin, in every room in the house. Do this when you're pregnant, do this when you're postpartum, my biggest tip. Number five, take the baby classes, whatever they may be, when you are pregnant. I wish someone told me this. I know I prepped every single day during pregnancy and I was like, on it somehow I didn't take a single class I kind of feel like it was like a weird time with COVID and there was nothing in person and I kind of shut down from classes but even if you don't think you're gonna do baby lead weaning like maybe only 1% you're like maybe I'll try it maybe I'll do a sleep you know training something but like 99% no if you're 1% maybe take that class when you are pregnant because taking them when you are sleep deprived whatever they may be like a lactation class a lactation specialist baby lead weaning course a sleep course take it pregnant <laughs> Put them on your baby registry if you can. Ask for friends and family to get it for you. It is so key. They've been like the most helpful things in my parenting life. Out of everything, I wish I had prepped that stuff. I mean, we got it done, we figured it out postpartum, but it could have been so much easier. Number six, lactation pills. You can totally go the route and do nothing to help your milk production, your lactation. I'm not telling you, you have to take lactation pills, but if you're looking for something like lactation cookies, lactation brownies, what drink can I drink to help my milk production? I tried everything, and yes, I did notice a difference with some things. I think the names were Cash Cow, Milk Money. I'll put the ones I used down below. I noticed the most milk when I took these. I actually, I'm not taking them anymore. I feel like my milk had super regulated, but there were definitely times in my journey, whether it was like a medical thing, like I had my kidney stones and I was in the hospital and I couldn't pump or breastfeed. Lactation pills saved me. If you have like a cookie recipe that you love for milk production, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you, if you don't want like added sugar in your diet or you want something that works like really well, lactation pills. Side note, I'm not telling you to just take pills and not to eat food. You have to eat every meal. Lots of calories, all the food to make milk as well. But the pills <laughs> really help. Number seven, this is kind of like the outfit category, what you need postpartum in the first year. I'm gonna save you some money here. The first two months, all I wore is comfy bras, not nursing bras. I found that you can just flip up a bra way easier than pulling it down, plus, those nursing bras you're not gonna use forever. A bra, a cute bra, a comfy one, you will. The Freedom Mom underwear and a robe. You don't need anything else for the first two months. You don't need Spanx, you don't need a new wardrobe, just comfy bras, a diaper, Freedom Mom underwear, and a robe. Obviously, you will need some clothes postpartum for a few months. 
I would just say be comfy. Get sweatpants two to three sizes bigger than your pre-pregnancy size. Get some oversized t-shirts. Get stuff that you feel cute and comfy in. And then start reinvesting into your wardrobe like six, seven months postpartum. Really give your body time to heal and don't judge it in a dressing room yet, okay? <laughs> Number eight. If somebody asks you what you want postpartum or you wanna get something for someone who just had a baby, get them a Postmates gift card, an Uber Eats gift card, get them food gift cards because that is something that falls on the back burner and they will definitely need and they will definitely use and we don't have to like see anyone in person, they don't have to get ready. You're giving them a meal so they can do what they need to do and they will love you for it, so. Food gift cards all the way for new parents. But also home cooked meals if you wanna drop it off on their doorstep, not make them have to think about how to socialize while being sleep deprived, do that too. Food when you're a new parent, so good. Number nine, and this was something I slowly discovered over the way postpartum, but join mommy groups. If you get on the What to Expect app, just like when you're early pregnancy, they'll match you into moms from all over who are also giving birth that same month. That's a great way to kind of like ease your way into it. But there are a ton of Facebook groups that are so, so helpful. I literally don't use Facebook for anything. I haven't posted a new photo in years, but I go into these mommy groups. There's one called Snoo Mamas that I found when I got the Snoo, but you don't need the Snoo to go into it. And they talk about a lot of like not Snoo related things. They share like sleep tips, wake windows, sleep schedules, their favorite sleep sacks. Why? Like these are moms in the know that care. And I found the groups to be really respectful and not judgmental. I'm sure, you know, there's always that on the internet, but I loved these groups, especially not having a like really close friend who operations and leave the building oh utilizing the nearest exit. was supposed to be do not be hard on yourself I know how can I tell you to not have mom guilt you're gonna have mom guilt but let me tell you I hear it all the time from other moms and it's true you can't pour from a cup that is empty okay so you need to be giving yourself some love so you can give the most love to everyone around you. <laughs> all right well guys that was a little bit of an unexpected ending but that's just parenthood. Expect the unexpected. To feed the baby every hour. I'm gonna go. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a like if there is a new mom in your life or somebody you just want to understand you a little bit better, send them this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye. Cause life right now is a movie.